Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews Heads Do West with our special new, I guess I guess I, I guess I can't say special, but our newest contributor to the show and our newest weekly contributor. Sorry about this, everyone. My audio seems to be playing, and that's because I have got this completely up creek without a paddle. Um, I want to thank our guest host of our new show, Do West. Dan Olson for coming in, sitting down, and talking about Western issues one-on-one, -on -one, and from time to time bringing in a guest or two to talk about Western issues that are important to you, Western Canadians. So Dan, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks, Chris. It's my honor to be here. So Dan, for those who are listening, for, the, for those who are tuning in, I, I guess I should ask the general question why are Western issues important to Dan Olson? Well, obviously, as a Manitoban, born and raised, I mean, everything Western is important to me. And it's really come to light lately as we see uh, more and more focus on Eastern issues being brought forward and the West being left behind. Uh, that was a good time to be standing up and talking about the Western issues. And what does that mean to you? What do Western issues mean to you? Because if you talk to someone like you are in Manitoba, if you talk to someone out here in Saskatchewan or in Alberta, Saskatchewan, BC, even through the three territories, it's going to mean something different to each and every single one of you. Um, but to Dan Olson, what does Western issues and what are the Western issues that are prevalent to you? Well, the, the most important one to me is actually having representation uh, in the House of Commons where somebody actually stands up and talks about Western issues, such as equalization payments, uh, you know, policing, all these things that go on that are put upon the provinces by the federal government. And we have, we have a say, but we actually don't use that say, and the provinces just go along with the federal uh, mandates. And for me, having a Western issue and a Western voice means we actually stand up against that and say, no, we can actually look after our own issues, our own, like getting uh, oil to market, getting hydro to market. All of these things are sitting here waiting to be sold, but we're told that we can't do it. And to me, the Western voice means we would be getting this out to market, getting it done. You know, the price of gas, everybody's paying the price. And there's absolutely no reason for it, although they blame the war in Ukraine, but it's the carbon tax. It's the fact that they won't let us uh, develop the resources that are here. These are Western issues. Now, for those who may know, uh, 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 Dan was a Maverick member until recently. He has stepped back from the party. I was a former liberal and I have literally stepped away from that party. So from time to time, Dan and I will not agree on everything. And that's what this show is about. This show, this new segment, which is a bi-monthly show. So every second Monday, we will be live 7 p.m. talking about Western issues. And we'll be debating the issues that are important. Because I think in today's society, and this is where Dan and I completely agree on, I believe, the exchange of ideas is so needed in today's society. And the exchange of different opinions is needed in society. And I, I guarantee you, Dan probably thinks I'm a socialist loving commie. And I think he's a true Western cowboy with a cowboy hat and a Blue Bombers fan. But at the end of the day, we're both Canadians and we're both people who want the best for ourselves and for the people who that are with us. So this is where this show is coming from. It's coming out of a place of respect and an exchange of ideas between two people. Dan, I'm so honored to have you on to do this with you because I think you and I, after that very first interview that we did together, after knowing each other for, I think, 48 hours, um, <laughs> has shown me that People like you, people like myself, are needed in today's society. So thank you for do, being part of this. I, I want to thank you for inviting me because to me, one of the most important things is a lot of people can agree. We can all be in an echo chamber and tell each other how great we think about each other's ideas. But the real development and the real moving ahead in agendas is actually when you don't agree. 
And when you can actually look at each other's opinions and think, oh, well, actually, I never looked at it that way. To me, that's what makes the difference. And, and I could not agree more on that because uh, we, we always grow, right? You and I are always growing. We're always trying to figure out what's best and where the truth lies. And I know I, from my perspective, I've gotten things wrong before. Hell, I ran as a liberal in northern Alberta. I thought I, I had a chance of winning shocker not a not a hope in hell to win that election but i i stuck to my morals and i stuck to my values and that's what we want this show to be about is morals and values and an exchange of ideas but dan and i are not going to be the only ones who are doing this show it's up to you the listeners as well and the viewers uh live stream if uh 7 p.m on monday nights doesn't work for you let us know and we'll try and rearrange it so we get more viewers and we grow this show but we want your feedback as well as we go along this. If you have topics you want us to discuss and debate, comment below via YouTube. Send us emails via the website, crossboardinterviews.ca. And we'll have that exchange of ideas because we want to hear from you. Because we, Dan's Manitoba, I'm Alberta. I know I don't know what's going on in Saskatchewan. I, don't, I have an idea what's going on in BC, but... I, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from people on the ground. So send us your feedback. Send us your messages. Dan, what would you tell people to do if they had a burning issue they wanted to discuss? Would we accept them onto the show? Oh, I would love. And, and here's the thing. Just because you don't fit into any particular political mode or anything like that, that makes it even better. Just come on and like share your ideas with us and let's talk about it. And all, you know, it could be three or four of us. Maybe none of us agree on it. But let's have a conversation. And let's see where it goes. Exactly. And that's the key thing. I don't care if you're an NDP or a Green, a Liberal, a Conservative of Maverick, a Western Independence Party, a People's Party candidate, or a supporter. Let's talk. Because our democracy is crumbling around us. We are seeing a more polarized community. And if it takes... A guy from Manitoba who is a Blue Bombers fan, which I'm not going to hold it against him to, through this because this is this is supposed to be an uplifting moment. And a guy from Calgary who roots for the Anaheim Ducks during the NHL seasons <laughs> and goes for the Toronto Argonauts for the uh, CFL. Then, hey, let's uh, – hey, whoa, whoa. Come on, Dan. I'm, I'm being nice to you. It, but we, we will do this. And this is, I know this is a long winded introduction, but we want to set the ground rules of this is we are going to fight. We're going to bicker. But at the end of the day, we're going to walk away from this conversation every two weeks and say, see you next, see you in two weeks, Dan. And I hope that we grow uh, our audience, but also grow our friendship along the way. And we learn something from each other, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, that's the biggest thing people need to know. Like we actually only met and talked randomly. Like it just, it just happened because you had a guest that didn't show up or whatever. And suddenly there we are having a conversation. And to me, that conversation went great. And when we, you started talking about having like a show where we talk about stuff, I was like, I'm all in mm -hmm. because I know that we disagree, but we disagree respectfully. And we just want to make it a conversation that hopefully impact somebody and makes it better for them exactly but we 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 don't want to keep our listeners listening to us just talk about how self-congratulatory we are and <laughs> how amazing we are about how how civil we are but we want to get into the meat and potatoes about this and every two weeks we're going to have some topics that we're going to be discussing and like i said if you have topics you want us to discuss send them in we'd love to hear them if you want to come on the show send us a message but this week, because it's our inaugural new segment, it's our inaugural episode, our July 4th episode, we're going to talk about some of the big issues that happened over the weekend and heading into the summer. And the first one I want to get off the plate is the 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 protests that we saw, whether it be the Freedom Convoy 2.0, whether it be uh, a march within uh, downtown Ottawa, uh, the... Uh, the rise of the protests that we saw in February coming back in July. Um, I, I tried to stay tuned as much as I possibly could during this uh, this time, but I was tuning in and out because I was I had family over and it was over the long weekend. And really, I tried to stay concentrated, but 
I was distracted. Dan, what was your initial thoughts when you saw what was happening downtown Ottawa again after a few months off? I am really conflicted on this one. And a little bit of it makes me angry uh, when I hear, because as we've talked about, the, the lack of being able to talk. So both sides immediately dug in and said, like, it's our right to protest. And the other side said, it's our city and we don't want you here. And that was the end of the conversation. And it, it escalated right away. I mean, we've seen the beautiful march uh, from the soldier who marched all the way across Western Canada and ended at the unmarked uh, grave of the soldier, uh, unnamed soldier. Beautiful moment, fantastic moment. Uh, some politicians probably made a little bit of headline off it, but whatever, they're gonna do that. And then from there, the police became so heavy handed. It was immediately they were uh, slamming people to the ground. And granted, I don't know what precipitated that. And I haven't seen any documentation on what led up to this aggressive act. But suddenly, you know, people were on the ground. Police had their knees on people's neck and head, slamming them to the cement ground. I mean, had this been a different scenario, where would have been the outrage then? Well, and I, I I appreciate you saying that because I I saw the video that you're you're talking about as well, where the Ottawa police, I think it was the Ottawa police, uh, the city police or yeah. parliamentary bureau security. I'm not sure which one it was. There was an altercation at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And I don't know the full details. So I always hate talking about something I don't know the full details on. But I will say that we live in a society right now that it is very much black and white. It is what we see on Twitter, what we see on social media is the Ooh. truth. And we we forget that there's always a story behind a video that's posted, whether it be uh, someone said something, someone punched someone, I don't know. So I want to see what actually transpired and will we get information? No, because we seem to always be very sketchy on what actually is released to the public via the police. Do I want more information? Hell yeah. I want to know what happened because we live in a place where 24 hour news cycle is that it is what goes out is literally done within 24 hours. But I hope it doesn't end here because I don't want to see uh, police brutality but I don't want to see people stamping on laws that need to be enforced. So this is where my, my, I have a conflict here is saying from what I saw, okay, if, if there was no precipitating issue and the police just went in and attacked, that's wrong. But if the people were doing something and then they attacked the police, that's wrong as well. So it's very sketchy and black. And there's a lot of gray in this situation that happened there. And I don't know where the actual story is. What I think bothers me, though, is the police haven't released anything. Like, they should be getting that information out immediately to try and at least show the other side. Like, just show us. Did the guy punch the cop in the face? Or, you know, did some crap happen that we didn't see? Because all we've seen so far is the aggressive police. And I agree with you. I hate commenting on it, but I can only comment on what has been released and what I've seen. And I have looked through every news article I could find, all the news streaming I could look at, and there has been no other side. So leaving that empty, leaving that void there, all we know is that the police decided they were going to be heavy handed. And then we've seen the video where the police were apparently, and I, again, this is apparently because we don't have any proof on this, but they were using their phones to target people they had seen there at the initial convoy and anyone that matched the description they were immediately arrested and hauled away so i mean to me what are we doing here and then i think what bothers me even more is watching them rip off canadian flags and searching children who want to go and celebrate canada day to me that's where i got really angry like we can be mad about the police. We can be mad about the protesters maybe misbehaving, all of that stuff. But shouldn't we set that aside and celebrate Canada Day? Like, let's just get together and remember that we're Canadians. Like, all of us are Canadians, regardless of what we believe or what we think. You know, and to me, they really wreck the day. I, I, I agree. And 
I wasn't there on the ground, so I don't know what they were searching for, but we live in a very heightened security world now. And you know that, and I know that. And I hate that we have to live in this world, but we did just see today, and I'm not trying to piggyback on any issues that have happened within the States, but we saw today a gunman shoot and kill six people at a parade celebrating uh, in their Independence Day. Now, I'm not saying uh, the USA is Canada at all. I think that Canadians are more civilized, and I think Canadians are more in tune with having an open dialogue instead of going right to killing people. And I'm not, I'm saying that with respect to the people who have lost their lives today, but I'm going to say this. We're Canadians. If you're showing up to an event with the intent to kill somebody, I hope there's security there to get a gun and get it off you. But we're celebrating our country. You have kids there. Like, this is not a new thing that people come and celebrate Canada Day. I'm not sure if this happened in 2021 or 2020 or 2019, but if this is the new norm, I don't like it. I really don't. And I think that whether it be because there was high profile people there, like the prime minister, the governor general, it's a little bit more heightened security. But I still suspect that Canadians wouldn't have been that stupid to be honest let's break it down even more let's let's grant the fact that there needs to be security especially when the prime minister is there i will grant that because i mean he is a very, very divisive prime minister and i'm sure there's some serious threats against him so i'll grant him the extra security let's go through that but what's what purpose security is serving ripping off canadian flags like off of people that are bringing the canadian flags and hold on Let's get even more controversial. Fuck Trudeau flags. Is that appropriate? I don't know. Is it an expression that should be allowed to be said? Yes. If you disagree with the prime minister, you should be able to fly whatever you want. We're not, we don't have free speech in Canada protected, but we do have freedom of expression. And to me, a flag is a freedom of expression. So you may not like the message on that flag, but you should be able to fly it if you want, regardless of whether you're in downtown Ottawa, downtown Winnipeg, anywhere in the West or East. So this this is where yeah, this is where the show is going to get interesting, because I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to agree with you that, you know what, if you want to fly a flag, go right ahead. Like, don't I don't give two craps. OK, may not want my four year old niece to see that. But at the same time, it's your right. It's do what you wish. If you if if that's the biggest issue in your world right now is flying your flag, then go fly your flag. My issue, though, stops when that flag becomes threats. My issue then becomes if the protester who's flying the flag says, I'm want, I, I'm going to show the uh, the prime minister the end of my barrel and my gun. That's when I say no. When you hang the prime minister in effigy as a dummy. Okay, when you say I'm going to go do it, that's when I that's when I have an issue. We, we I agree. We have the ability of freedom of expression in this world. Stephen Harper got these uh, hangings and Doug Ford and Jason Kenney, Rachel Notley. It's part of the game when it comes to politics. I think every politician understands that. My point is don't go to Ottawa. Say, if you don't get your way, I'm going to like storm the capital and then expect to have something changed. That's where I draw my line. And that's oh, where oh, I oh. think you and I are going to disagree on. <laughs> so we're heading towards the freedom, the actual freedom convoy here. Yeah, we are. So, so yeah, I, I am of two minds on the freedom convoy because as you know, I, I have a strong drive of people being free to express what they need to express a hundred percent. And I think you know that about me. I, I may disagree a lot of the times, but I believe you have that right to express what you need to express. Uh, and I don't know if I can give a, am I allowed to talk about, I just finished reading the book uh, written by Andrew Lawton there. You can do whatever you want. If he Perfect. wants to come on the show, if he wants to donate some money that you just gave him and back to me, then that's great. 
Let's do it. Yeah. But no, this is a free exchange of ideas. If we promote another show, it's not going to kill me. But hopefully he promotes my show as well. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just read that book. And the biggest thing that I agreed with on that book, there was a few things. A, the everybody in that, con- like the main organizer of that conference, when the injunction came out to shut down the horn, it was too much. I can't even imagine I used to drive trucks, so I know what those air horns sound like, and I kind of imagine what hundreds of them would have sounded like going 24 hours a day. So that stuff should end. Am I coming through? I just got a yep. warning out of my... You did. It was just very uh, intermittent, but you got the story out. It was just, that's what I was about to say. Uh, the great thing about this, we have a city mouse and a country mouse doing this show, so we have someone <laughs> living in the country on di- rural internet, and someone here so if we do have audio issues i do apologize just up front but continue on dan so yeah so anyways to make it kind of a more abbreviated because i mean i can talk on this forever the biggest thing is i agreed with the protest in general but of course people latch on to these things who don't necessarily have the best intentions and i think it was made very clear that there was one person and i'm not even going to give his name uh, air time who latched onto this and tried to pretend he was an organizer of the convoy and the convoy was trying to separate from him because his message was unacceptable nobody is doing a insurrection in ottawa i don't think any of the main pro, uh, protesters ever thought anything ever of storming uh, our parliament or anything like that and if they did I would be one of the first people to jump up and say that is inappropriate and horrible. But I don't think that was the message. I think a few people latched onto it, of course, made it look bad. And of course, legacy media all over that. That's the headline. Here's the people doing it. And we've seen that they've proved many of the stories that the media was going with were all false, incorrect, and not appropriate. So do I agree with the protest that they put on? Yes. Uh, they've, they actually condemned the blocking of the borders, which I obviously condemn as well. You know, you're only hurting Canadians by stopping the flow of, uh, goods across that border. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to interject here for a second, if you're okay with that. Yeah. Of um, I agree. The, 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 the majority of the people there. We're there to protest. We're there to say we don't want mandates. And this was going back to February now. I don't know what they were doing this time around, to be honest, whether it was we want Justin Trudeau to resign, whether it was we we want X, Y, and Z. I don't know what this, this uh, convoy was about or this protest was about in Ottawa this time. I know there was a lot of Western Canadians there, and that's why we're talking about it. But... My concern is what you just said. You get some bad apples who get into involved in the, these convoys, these protests, and they change the narrative of what you're ultimately there for. Now, I've always been a big believer what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So mm-hmm. if 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 the left on Twitter and I I'm part of that community because I I believe in some issues on the left I believe some issues on the right, the left on the tw- on Twitter say, well there's a Nazi flag flying. Okay, understandable. If you go poll every single one of them, I guarantee you they're good and say get the hell out of here. We don't want that fly- flying here. On the flip side, and this is my big issue. On the flip side, if there's a left protest, whether it be uh, uh, for abortion rights or for Black Lives Matter or for uh, same-sex marriage, there's always going to be some bad apples on those protests as well. But we always forget about those bad apples on the on the left. And that's my concern, is if you have a litmus test for the right for protest like the freedom convoy you better well damn have a litmus test for the left as well and i'm not saying that all people are bad and we're not supposed to lump them in and i would never lump them in because i saw some protests down in calgary with the communist flag flying now i'm not a communist i'm a canadian i'm a true canadian i believe in our government i believe in our democracy and it may not be perfect but it's not a communist 
If you are going to lump everyone in as a neo-Nazi because a one flag was flying in Ottawa, you better well damn believe you better start lumping everyone in as a communist here in Canada or Calgary when there's a communist flag flying as well. There's no double standard. It's one standard for everyone. And that's the problem. And we see and that's I don't get canceled after that statement, Dan. I don't think I can do any worse than that. Sorry. (laughs) And here's here's the facts, right? Like here's what we the the premise of our whole conversation is the fact that one side thinks they're right, the other side thinks they're right, and none of them will talk to each other. They're just the other side is completely wrong and they can't even have a conversation. And that's the problem. <laughs> because I can guarantee well, I can't guarantee you, I don't know for a fact, but I would imagine that you take a lefty, a righty, a centrist, and whatever else in the middle. And you look at these egregious acts that are done with the Nazi flags, burning of buildings, smashing of private property, flying communist flags, like all that stuff. I think if everybody had an honest conversation, they would be like, well, yeah, I don't agree with that. Like, that's, that's not the way it is. Exactly. Right? That's what this show is going to be about. We're going to have these people on. We're going to have this conversation because I think it's an important conversation in 2022 because... We jump to the extreme so quickly because I, I, I'm not sure. Do you know why they were protesting in Ottawa this time? Do you know what they were doing over the long weekend? Was it more we want the mandate stand? Because I don't know which mandates are still out there, to be honest. Whether it be, okay, I, I, I have to wear a mask while I'm on a plane. Understandable. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. But I, at the end of the day, I'm okay with it. But am I inconvenienced? Am I going to like die no but i still will wear a mask because just like i will wear a seatbelt, it's what i do i actually think i actually think the government kind of brought this upon themselves by so. deciding that they were going to arrest tamara lynch again just before you think Canada that's what Day the Day catalyst Day. was i i mean i'm speculating too right because i don't think anyone really knows what was the real catalyst of what was going on because i mean as you said, most mandates have been lifted or suspended. And that could be a bone of contention too, right? They're only suspended. So they could be brought back at any time. So no mandate has actually ended in Canada. They've just been suspended. So that's a problem as well. Yeah. But, you know, I, I kind of picked the Tamara Lynch thing because it's, it reeks to high heaven. Like you're going to arrest her just before Canada Day because you're worried that there may be protests in Ottawa. Why? Like, why? And I, and you and I had talked about this a little bit beforehand, but I'll put it on the record as well. Okay, it does sink a little l- like high to ha- heaven, but I, I'm a law-abiding law citizen. If I was to go to court and I was going to have some require or uh, conditions put on my release... You better well damn believe I'm going to make sure I follow all of those to a T because I don't want to go to jail. I would never want to sit in jail. And I could just imagine no one would if you were not doing anything, quote unquote, illegal. Well, I, I'm going to push back on you on this one. Okay. I mean, she's charged with, what is it, conspiracy to commit mischief? Yep. And a few other whatever whatever they are, they're pretty minor charges. So uh, understandable, understandable. And this, oh, we're we're getting into it. Tamara Lynch, yeah. you're getting so, us into it already. So like, she is under these humongous restraints of what she can and can't do, and that prosecutor wants her in jail nonstop. He is scouring every moment every second of her life because she conspired to commit mischief in ottawa so we have murderers who are given bail with way less restrictive bail requirements and we have somebody committing mischief who is under basically you're going to make a mistake and you're coming back to jail yeah, we could do a full hour on the shit show <laughs> that our fucking justice system is under, whether it be our revolving door of letting people out who, like you said, have committed murder, if whether it be the Supreme Court saying you can no longer get life in prison for mass murders, 
I agree wholeheartedly that reforming our justice system is a top priority for any elected politician, whether it be provincial, municipal, or federal. I know it's a federal issue, but West here, because I've lived in rural communities before, and I've seen the rotating, oh, the guy gets, uh, go, the perpetrator go gets picked up, gets put in jail, goes to the court system, court system says, we have no space for you, so we're going to kick you out. Don't do it again. Come see us on the 4th of July, and we'll have another court hearing. And I'm going, what what criminal is going to go, you know what? I'm going to go back to court on the 4th of July. <laughs> Some of them will. Some of them will. But there's a few of them that go, bye, talk to you later. And our, our politicians think that what they're doing is a fix, and it's not. It's creating the uh, worst problem. And our Supreme Court need to give their head a shake for this horrendous, horrendous justice that they just put down on every single victim of a mass murderer, whether it be Polytechnic in Quebec, whether it be uh, the Muslim uh, the mosque in uh, Quebec as well. We need to shake our heads and give some respect to the victims of this country. And the Liberal government right now is fighting to reduce the uh, length of time that gun uh, crimes are, are serving in jail. Like, so on one hand, they're saying that we need to eliminate guns and gun violence. But on the other hand, they're telling the criminals, we're no, we don't want to keep you in jail too long either. So what exactly is the message? Because the only message I get out of that is that law-abiding gun owners are in trouble with the government. Yeah, I that Western that that gun buyback program, whatever you want. I'm still reading into it. I'm still learning about it because I think it's a gong show, and I think the Trudeau Liberals announced something, and I won't even talk about whatever the RCMP is under, like with the RCMP commissioner, whether she gave information yeah. because there's still information coming out. Um, I don't know what the liberals are thinking right now i wish i could be a stone a fly on that wall but let's be honest i think there's a lot of people who would want to be a fly on that wall and there's not and oh. liberals and we'll, just, we'll, yeah, go ahead. we'll never know we'll never know no um but we, we we haven't even talked about western issues we've talked about ottawa I, no. <laughs> let's like, get down to business this but this is a great thing i, I want to talk about western politics because uh, before we started this interview, uh, before we started the show, uh, Dan and I were talking and we were talking pretty in depth about not in depth, but we were talking pretty off the cuff about it's been pretty boring around here in Western Canada on the provincial, the municipal, the federal level with a leadership race uh, federally for the conservatives. We are getting bare minimum attention right now. Because they've sold their memberships and they left. The Liberals, I'm hoping, hoping, will start figuring out how to potentially come into Western Canada without like hurting themselves. But come into Western Canada and start talking about Western issues. The NDP are the NDP. Um, the Bloc, <laughs> well, they're the Bloc. <laughs> the Green Party, they're going to be coming through Western Canada because they're on a leadership tour as well. But... Western Are politics, they? yeah, they just they just launched on the twenty fourth of um, uh, G, uh, the last week. Last week, yeah, last week they announced the rules of the leadership campaign. So you're going to start seeing some Green Party of Canada leadership candidates coming out of the woodworks and start announcing that they're running for the leadership. I know two Western uh, candidates who are going to be putting their name forward. So it's going to be interesting to see what a Green Party of Western Canada looks like. But that's here nor there. But I want to I want to put this question to the people who are listening because I see some people who are watching and listening. And to, remember, if you're listening to this via the website, head over to our YouTube channel, type in your questions if you want them uh, answered or to us to talk about it for a bit. But are Western politics boring right now in the summer? Because summer, you have rodeo after rodeo across this great country, this West, Western Canada. And it seems like that's more thrilling than fucking politics right now. 
Sadly, I think that it's just us political nerds that are reaching and hoping that there's some kind of news that we can focus on and talk about and do. I think the general person right now uh, has pretty much checked out. They're doing their rodeos in Alberta. Uh, there's some in Manitoba coming up with Morris Stampede. Uh, the X just came through. All of the summer festivals are in full swing. People haven't had the ability to go out for over two years and do these festivals. So I, I think a lot of things have been pushed to the side. I think the CPC and their leadership race, they made it way too long. So people have pretty much checked out. I think, uh, I mean, I don't want to make any speculations. I don't know, I have any inside information on it. It looks like it's Pierre's to lose. Uh, you know, can we talk I mean, about, can we talk, can we talk about the piece of wood? Can we talk about the piece of wood? Because I, I saw that video. I saw your tweet and I went, what the hell is Dan smoking on this one? Because I tried to watch it. <laughs> I tried to watch it four times. I got to his part about this is where the man takes the axe and the chops it down. I was like, am, am I high? Am I high watching this right now? Because I feel like, an, don't trust me, recovering narcotic user. So I am no longer touching the stuff. Recovering alcoholic. So I'm no longer touching the stuff. I, I, I'm trying to figure out what you were on. Like, you you liked it? Let me be clear. I don't do drugs either. I've never been interested. Doesn't do it for me. Um, I I don't know if it's just because of the whole string of his videos have been really successful. And what I bought into on this video, like, I mean, the wood thing was a little bit corny. I mean, he did talk about reclaiming wood and whatever. That's fine. But what it actually showed was a real side of him. And I think that's what I was reading into it was not so much that he was caressing the wood and talking about the wood and all this stuff, but he actually let the viewer into a little bit of his personal life. You know, here's what I've renovated. This is what I look at. And this is just me talking to you as a normal person, right? I mean, it, that is what is going to probably, in my opinion, sway the average voter. They're going to be like, I kind of know this dude. Like, you know, he built a beautiful, reclaimed all this wood. He's sent, he's sensitive to the issues of reclaiming wood. You know, he's not trying to say that freedom is his, that he's bringing to Canada, but he's actually wanting us to all reclaim our freedom. Regardless of how corny you and I may think these messages are, I think that's going to resonate with the average person watching it because he starts to come across as just an everyday person. Yeah. I, I will be honest. I, I, I well, then we'll get back to politics in Western and how boring it is. <laughs> um, I we can't even get there. It's so boring. <laughs> exactly. I know, and I apologize, everyone. Next in, in two weeks' time, the the issue that we're going to be talking about, and hopefully we can get two other people on to talk about this. This is more of an introduction of who Dan and I are in this episode. But the next episode is going to be talking about the biggest issue that Western Canada is dealing with right now, and that is autonomy, sovereignty, or separation. Which one should we go with? So if you want to come on, send Dan or I a message and we'll vet you guys and we'll make sure that you're not going to come on and spew some weird things that we don't want to talk about. Maybe we will, but let's be honest. I, I want to make sure that we have a civil debate and not just a debate that goes off the rails. Um, and so, I would love to hear a lot of different opinions on this because it's a, it's a far-reaching one and it's actually a serious topic. Because as Western alienation grows, it be, it's going to become more and more of an issue. And the more that Ottawa slams Alberta, they're almost going to have no choice but to do something. So with that, actually, Dan, you've just made me do some extra work after the live show today. Um, starting <laughs> on uh, Wednesday, so Wednesday, July 7th, 6th, July 6th, on the crossborderinterviews.ca website, we'll be running a two-week-long poll where we will be getting you to give us your opinions on Western alienation, mm -hmm. separation, and sovereignty, which one you believe is the best, and which one we need moving forward. So check that out on our website on Wednesday. The links will be on our show in, in uh, via Twitter, via Facebook, via Instagram, and I'm assuming Dan will share it as well because we want to hear back. Oh, yeah. And then, then we'll sh we'll talk about that. We'll bring two other people on to talk about that. And I'm I'm looking f I'm I'm now looking forward to that episode. I I was a little apprehensive because I didn't know how it was going to go. But now with that, we're going to have feedback. Let's do it. But going back to Pierre, <laughs> and then going back. Yeah. To Western politics, how boring it is. 
Um, I like Pierre's candidate message. Candidate, his candidate message, the one that he released while he was on the bridge, that was good. I liked it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Pierre. I don't have any ill will towards him. I like. I know there's a lot of people who are like, oh, he's an asshole. Oh, he's an asshole. There's a lot of people who think that about Trudeau. There's a lot of people who think that about Singh. They're people who put on their pants the exact same way that you and I do. So let's be let's give cut them some slack here. Um, I just didn't like this one, and I don't know what rubbed me the wrong way, whether it be the plank, but Pierre's storytelling is a godsend to him. He he can tell a story. He can he can grip people into watching a ten minute video about a house about a piece of wood, which I tried four times and I still can't, or about a mill that was built in the 1870s. So I think he's a good storyteller. I think you're right. He is. It's a foregone conclusion that he is probably going to win. But going back, back, back to the original statement about Western politics and uh, our politicians sort of being on vacation during the summer, are you hopeful that people will start paying attention or you think the people are just checked out? Because I know in... Saskatchewan, they're going to have municipal elections here soon. Winnipeg, they're going to have municipal elections soon. Alberta, we have a UCP leadership race ramping up. In BC, they have the race to be the next premier as well, with John Horgan stepping down with the NDP. Are we just tuned out because COVID-19 has screwed us over for the last two years and people are like, you know what, I don't care what happens. I'm going to just take my family, go vacation somewhere warm or go vacation somewhere out in the wilderness and just shut off my mind for two weeks because the last two years have been a shit show. I, I think, unfortunately, that is probably the general consensus is that people are just, they're checked out. They, they want no part of it. They've been told for two years what they can and can't do, where they can and can't go. And now there's, you know, pretty much... And there's not freedom for everybody because if you're not fully vaxxed or whatever the story is, you can't freely travel. But regardless, you can have these cross the in, the provincial borders. You can go camping. You can do what you need to do. I don't think people are really paying attention to politics right now. And to me, that's really scary because there's some real candidates in Alberta that are running to be the leader and actually be the premier of Alberta at least for a short period of time and they are running very different planks and they're very different people and the people of Alberta sh should be paying attention because some of them are running on autonomy slash separation and some are running against that platform yeah so Alberta needs to make a very important decision coming up at the polls so that I hope they're paying attention I, and I in, in what way no, go ahead. Continue. I was going to interject because we have a question that just came in. I just want to make sure. Oh, yeah, let's go with the question. Okay. Let's go with the question. I'm so the question comes from Jonathan. Uh, I'm not sure if Jonathan's listening. Uh, well, he's watching this. So uh, what is your opinion on the premier of Manitoba? Oh, horrendous. So, so this uh, is Heather Stephenson. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. is her last name. Uh, she yeah. was the premier. Uh, she was premier elected in 2021. Uh, against yeah, Shelley I Glover uh, after Brian Pallister stepped down. And then they had an interim premier. So, Dan, what's your opinion? Then I'll try and give mine because I honestly don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, the facts are she's pulling at 23%. Uh, most of the people didn't like her in the beginning. Uh, we we believe there was the usual, the PC party decided who they wanted to win the the leadership of that party. Uh, Shelly Glover was a bit of a, a wild card running in there. And I don't think she was well liked because she obviously was not an establishment candidate. And we ended up with Shelly Glover and she has done nothing to, nothing. She's literally done nothing except shake Trudeau's hand and agree that they federal and provincial governments need to work closer together. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's absolute garbage. Um, I, 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 I'm going to be honest, Jonathan, for those, for Jonathan, if you're watching this or if you're listening to this and just jumped over via the audio over the video tune, um, I don't know her that well. I'm going to be honest. Uh, she's the one premier that kind of is laying low in this whole rigmarole. 
Um, I know that she almost lost uh, the riding of Tuxedo, if I'm not mistaken, in the by-election earlier this year, where Brian Pallister was the MLA and then stepped down to the Liberals. No, 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 no. no. Uh, that was uh, not Tuxedo. Uh, white, white she, Ave? White something? Uh, white. Uh, I can't I, think of it. We're doing white lunch. Ridge? Something <laughs> By election, I, I covered it, but I can tell you I don't remember it. That well, here's here's what I can tell you: the fact it had been conservative safely for over fifty years, and they almost lost by like two hundred votes. It was that close Fort between White. the Liberal and Fort White. Thank you. Yeah, like two hundred votes separated the Liberal and the Conservative in a what has always been a safe riding. So to me, that is a forecast of what we're in for when the election comes around in 2023. I don't think it'll be liberals by any stretch of the imagination, but I feel that we're going to have a very serious orange wave come across Manitoba again. And Manitoba's usually always like that. They always go in waves because when Pallister came in, he swept Selinger out. Um, Pallister, I'm assuming, saw the writing on the wall because he was not a well-liked premier. Um, I haven't no like I I try to follow politics as closely as possible in Western Canada. I, I I get the press releases from the Manitoba government on a daily basis, and I can tell you some of them are quite boring. And I don't know what's going on with that government, but I I think they're fresh out of ideas, and they're trying to figure out how to re-energize their base heading into the next election because. Jesus, um, if your party is already fresh out of ideas after your premier has only been in power for less than a year, what does that tell you about the state of your party? Like, I, I, I'm not a Manitoba, and Dan, you might be able to talk a little bit more about this in depth, but like, Stephanie has a long road ahead of her before if she wants to keep the keys to the premier's office, doesn't she? No, 100% she has a long road ahead of her. I think it actually speaks to a more concerning issue in politics in general is if you are just an everyday person and you want to try and run to be the premier or you want to try to run to be the prime minister or anything like that, you are pretty much shut out. You, like, they set the bar so high. We can use the Alberta example. I mean, it's $150,000 if you just want to put your name forward. And so then I mean, another 25000 on top of that to, for a goodwill, don't screw up or don't say anything bad about people uh, donation as well. <laughs> and I think, I think that speaks to what the real problem is in politics is people are starting to realize it's just recycled politicians over and over again. They've all sat in the same government, have all done the bad things and all sat there quietly on their hands and have not criticized the leader. So... Sooner or later, the elector just says, well, whatever. Because and Stephenson then all it was in Pallister's uh, cabinet, right? Yeah. She was in charge of a lot of the health and stuff. And, you know, they laid off all these nurses right at the beginning of the pandemic. And, like, yeah, like, mistake after mistake. I, I, I'm i going to probably make a bold prediction. And it's probably going to piss uh, jo- uh, Dan off here a bit. But I think... Wab Canoe is going to be the next premier of uh, Manitoba in 2023. Love him or hate him, it looks like the provincial progressive conservatives are going to end a dynasty. And I I will say this. I have been proven wrong before. I thought Alison Redford was going to lose against Daniel Smith in 2012. I thought uh, Doug uh, Tim Hudak was going to uh, win against Kathleen Wynne in 2015, uh, 2018. Kathleen won, Wynne pulled out. I thought Christy Clark was going to go down and defeat against Adrian Dix. Christy Clark pulled out of majority government. So I have been known to be wrong and I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. Um, but it doesn't look good if you're pulling at 23% a year out. I'd love to tell you you're wrong and I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you still got the blue bombers. They could put it, they, they won last year, didn't they? Uh, for the second year in a row, that is. Yeah. Two years in a row. Not make a dynasty. <laughs> Call me when you. I believe they're beating Toronto right now. Well, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alberta. 
Let's there, talk some Alberta. Yeah, let's talk about Alberta here for a second because anyone who's been paying attention to the show knows that we have been doing live episodes with uh, the UCP leadership candidates here for a while. Uh, and Jonathan, if we didn't answer your question, please uh, message us and we'll try to or we'll try to talk about it later. But right now, we're going to move on to our last topic, and it's about that's about the UCP leadership. Um, you you said it best so eloquently that we have candidates who are running for autonomy we have candidates running on sovereignty we have one candidate running on the issue of separation and we have some candidates running so far against those three things but more we need to stand up against ottawa more often um I'm 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 gonna stay, try to stay as neutral as possible here because I want to try and bring all the guests on the show and all the candidates on the show. But I'm gonna say this: um, everyone has the right to their own opinion. Everyone has the right to believe what they are running on is the best of what they want. I will say this though: if you have an idea, if you are running on that idea, you better well damn well have the backup and the ideas to follow through on that and the cojones to follow through on that because we have seen with Andrew Shear, we have seen with Jason Kenney, we have seen with Aaron O'Toole, candidates who run in leadership races and then pivot to a completely different person is going to destroy the party. So if you are running on this, you better well get behind it full force because if not, the electorate does not forget or forgive. Yeah. And I mean, we've seen we've seen it with uh, when they elected the uh, NDP there. That was a pure, in my opinion, a pure protest vote against uh, the Conservative government in Alberta, and unheard of. I mean, when was the last time an NDP has won anything in Alberta? I, I Never. Don't know. Never. Yeah. Never. Yeah. So I mean, obviously that. And it was right the only now, province it, in Confederation that had never, the only province west of Ontario that had never elected an NDP government in its history. Well, Yukon and the Northwest Territories and Nunavut is completely separate because they have a weird yeah. system besides Yukon, but it was the first time in 2015. So, I mean, let's think about that. And then on top of that, right now, Rachel Notley, who is again running to be the premier, is pulling pretty high, in my opinion, in Alberta. Now, there's no leader, right? She's not running against any specific topic. She just hates them all and they're all going to do a horrible job and she's going to do the best job. So, I mean, she should be leading right now in the polls, ideally. But I, I agree with you. Like, if whatever topic they have decided is their heel, they better be ready to die on that heel or they will be out. And I mean, to me, my biggest opinion, and I've been following them very pretty closely for a Manitoban, and Danielle Smith, I think she has the most to gain and the most to lose because she does have that issue where she crossed the floor and irritated a lot of people. But she's, she's come forward with a bold plan, a bold vision, and she has really harnessed the anger against Ottawa right now. But if, if she pivots on that, she will be crushed, in my opinion, because she is really she's reached in. There is the raw nerve in Alberta. You know, Ottawa has overreached. They have overreached. Jason Kenney let them overreach. Now you're our hero. You're saying you're going to stand up and you're going to fight against this. You put out a whole platform on your step by step process to do this. You pivot away from that. I think that will be the last time we see her in politics. I'm gonna. I, I'm so glad you brought this up because I was not. I I had not even thought about talking about this until you did. Um, I want to talk about Danielle Smith for a second. Yet again, we've reached out to her campaign and we're trying to get her on. We've talked to a few people over the last few weeks because we're putting together a show where we're going to be talking about the leaders and who they are and their supporters. And you'd be surprised at how many people used to be very pissed off at Danielle Smith. And saying, you know what, you gave the NDP the win in 2015 because you crossed the floor. We were going to go with you, but you decided you were going to be closer to uh, Jim Prentice, the late Jim Prentice. So we we don't we, we don't want to go with you. But they say when they listen to her talk now, it's night and day, and they have newfound respect for her. But there's still that inkling in the back of their head saying, 
if I give you this, are you going to turn coat on me and be completely different? And there's a lot of people who are saying, we're willing to give you one more chance. Don't fuck it up. So Danielle Smith may be the front runner potentially in this race because she has the media persona. She has the uh, name recognition that there's a lot of candidates are looking for. But there's still a lot of Albertans who are very pissed off about that floor crossing and what happened and what transpired leading up until that May 2015 election. I don't know if it's going to hurt her. I think there's a lot of Albertans who are very forgiving, but I've always said this to people. If they show you your true colors the first time, believe them, because the second time, it's all your fault. So I'm saying that if Daniel Smith has changed, good. Just be cautious, because we have seen in the past people say one thing and then do something completely different. I, I think one thing in her favor, and I'll give her this, is she's owned it. She hasn't run from it. She hasn't denied it. Yeah. She hasn't swayed. She owns what she did. And to me, I think that is probably why she is getting this grace in this, is she didn't try to explain it. She just said, I made a mistake. I mean, any any human beings here can understand making a mistake. And she, she's owning it. So I think that is her saving grace right now as long as she carries on going with it and just owning this whole, you know, standing up to Ottawa. Exactly. So we will see what happens. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a, if it's a foregone conclusion that she's going to win this, but she has been turning heads. And in 2022, I thought I would never say those words about Danielle Smith after the floor crossing, but here we are. I'm willing to be proven wrong. I, I think all candidates who are putting their name forwards have the right to be there. I think all candidates who are putting their name forwards have the reason uh, has a have a reason to be there. Uh, for the candidates who haven't been, appeared on the show and that are sitting, uh, my email sitting in their inbox right now. Get back to me. We'd love to have you on the show to talk about these issues. But I want to leave off on this before we switch and we start wrapping up here because we're almost at the hour mark and I want to make sure that we try to keep this as hour. Well, that went by fast, eh? I, it always goes by fast when you and I chat, Dan. <laughs> like, I think we have to turn this into like a four hour episode because by the time four hours, like, oh, it feels like an hour. Um, we want to hear from you. We have a poll going on on our website right now. Another poll because we like polls and everyone loves polls um, about your opinion on the UCP leadership race. So that's going to be rolling out for the next two weeks as well. We might be uh, talking about that because I just saw someone ask us to do a full episode on uh, the UCP leadership and where we believe they are. So after we have sat down with all the candidates, we'd be more than happy to do that or as many candidates as are willing to come on the show to talk about these issues. But I'm going to say this. Head over to our website on Wednesday. We'll talk about autonomy, separation, and uh, sovereignty. Head over to our website, and there'll be links to the actual UCP poll as well. Fill them out because we want to hear from you. Um, if you're a UCP candidate running for the UCP leadership in this province, get outside the Calgary and Edmonton bubble. I know that's where a lot of Albertans live right now is Calgary and Alberta. But there are people in this province who do not live there who would love to hear from you. And I'm a strong believer in rural issues. I think rural issues are always forgotten when it comes to provincial matters and federal matters and municipal matters besides the municipal municipality councils. So please deal with Calgary and Alberta, but go to places like Hannah, go to places like Cambers, go to places like... Vegreville in Alberta because you'd be surprised how many people have different opinions than what you're hearing in Calgary and this comes back to where this Do West show comes from is we want to hear from you we, we will try to bring people on to talk about these issues but get outside your bubbles and have conversations with, with people that you don't fully agree with because you'd be surprised at how much you actually have in fucking common. Pardon my French. If I don't get tuned off, like put in YouTube jail for all these swearings, I don't know what's going to happen. But Dan, my last, the last statement to you, uh, what would you want people to know about Western politics and the future of this, this, this new segment that we're going to be putting together? 
Well, I'm super pumped to do this pro this segment for sure. And it's going to be nice. Super and pumped. we, I, I want to hear lots of rural versus urban. Like let's have that conversation. There is so much in there to talk about. We could probably spend a whole year discussing those issues and let's, People, come on, come talk to us on the show so we can actually talk to the everyday person who has an opinion on this. Like, let's discuss it. And the Western issues, I think right now, autonomy, separation, Western alienation, these are the topics that are the hot button. And we need, I want to hear what everybody thinks. Where do you sit? Do you believe that you can't get a deal with Ottawa and we just need to cut our ties? Or do you think we just need some kind of fair deal where they realize that Alberta and the West has been paying for the East to prosper? And maybe it's time to look at that. You know, there's so many things, but having different people, no matter where you fall in that political spectrum, let's have a conversation, just an everyday conversation. And you can see Chris and I, we pretend to agree, but we really don't. We're just really nice to each other about it. This is just the first episode. We gotta we gotta milk them in by go, oh, these guys are nice. Next week when we talk about separate <laughs> next two weeks after we talk about separation, autonomy, and uh, sovereignty, they'll be like, uh, we're not going back to that show. They they yell at each other a lot. Um but I agree with you. And I I I, I, I was gonna give you the last word on this, but I'm gonna I am going to i am always gonna take the last word because I like taking last words because literally cross border C B Chris Brown, haha. <laughs> um talk to us. Talk to us, reach out to us. Um we we love having different opinions on the show. Dan and I, uh, like I said, we we literally, it was a random meeting that we had via Twitter. I always rail against Twitter, but it always tells me that people use it for good. So if you want to come on the show, if you want to talk about some issues, please send us your messages, send us your talking notes, and we'd love to have them. Uh, we have had a... One person say, do uh, Jonathan, the guy who sent us the message about uh, the Manitoba premier, do an episode on the UCP leadership candidates. Like Jonathan, like all the other people who are listening, if you have ideas, message us because we want to talk about the issues that are important to you. And if you have an idea and if you have a guest that you think would be beneficial to us, send us a message. Send us a message with their name and we'll reach out to them and see if we can bring them on the show. And like I said, it does not have to be someone who is Pro separation, pro uh, autonomy, pro uh, sovereignty. It can be an NDP, a piece, PPC. It can be anyone. We'd love to have them on. Heck, if the Honorable Jay Hill would grace us with his presence for an episode, we'd love to have him on the episode. If Tarika Nalga, uh, Tarika Nalga has wants to come on the show, we'd love to have him on. Anyone who wants to come on the show, whether it be in Saskatchewan, because we always forget about Saskatchewan because we're Calgary and Manitoba or Alberta and Manitoba. If you're from Saskatchewan, you want to come on the show, let us, we'll bring you on. If you're from BC, you want to come on the show, let us know and we'll bring you on as well. Because this show is about one thing and one thing of only Western issues from Westerners about Western Canada. So with that, Dan, thank you so much for doing this. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thanks, Chris. So with that, remind everyone, this will be in the Crossboard Interviews. Heads due west on your July 4th, 2022. So with that, talk to you later, Dan. Talk to you later, everyone.